What's going on you guys? Welcome to another episode. I'm about to show you guys some extremely rare and possibly never seen before footage of some very weird dolphin behavior uh, that we observed while scuba diving down in Mexico. What I'm doing right now is I'm looking for a spot and I think I just found it where we're gonna do uh, just a little fire. Uh, I'm out in the woods right now preparing for some survival trips and episodes that we're gonna be filming through this winter. So I'm just out Gonna be honing my bushcrafting skills a little bit. Now, if you're brand new, I guess I'll just explain that I make outdoor YouTube videos up in the northern, more temperate climates. I'm up in the Pacific Northwest of the United States. Now, I am not a tropical YouTuber at all, so if that's, if that's what all you're looking for, then uh, probably don't subscribe to this channel. Now, if you are into the mountains, uh, backpacking, trout fishing, the occasional salmon fishing, yeah, then you'll enjoy this channel right here. Feel free to check out the other videos. So I'm gonna explain everything about Mexico, but I'm gonna get myself a little bit of wood first. So this stuff here is called lichen. This is a symbiotic relationship between algae and a fungus. And uh, it's a great fire starter when it's dry. This stuff here is damp, unfortunately. What we're just gonna do is put the stuff in my pocket. I'm gonna spread it out in there a little bit. And hopefully now my body heat uh, will start drying that out and it'll wick out through the pants. So that's the driest we're gonna be able to get something uh, out here when everything's totally wet and we've got no sun to dry it out. Now the reason that I was down in Mexico was I was there with my family, it was my birthday, so it was just a, a fun uh, family trip, relaxing, wasn't really planning on filming any episodes. Now the variety of corals and animal life in that reef was absolutely mind blowing. I've never seen anything like it. I've been free diving and um, snorkeling my basically my entire life. But this was just unlike anything I'd ever, ever seen before. So barracuda are actually a very interesting fish. They're probably one of my favorite uh, predatory fish just because they're very curious about humans. They'll often come in and just kind of check you out from afar and <laughs> then they'll either just slowly swim off or they'll just keep hanging in that spot and they'll just keep watching you, sometimes alone, sometimes in a group of multiple barracuda. It is an amazing experience. It is a life-changing experience. So if you've ever thought about it and wanted to give it a try, just do something crazy and sign up for some scuba classes. It's something I'll do for the rest of my life. It's not amazing.
Really what I'm trying to find is just some dead wood that doesn't have bark on it uh, because that would usually be the driest that would allow the wood to dry out. That's a little bit dry on the inside. Not horrible, we'll take this along. Look at this, it's been raining for weeks, but right there on the inside of this stuff, that's pretty dry. That's not bad at all. It's some kind of a, what is this, some kind of a maple or something? Maybe some of you tree experts can tell by the bark. Yeah, the bark just kind of exploded off of this, this tree here. Yeah, the bark just comes right off of this stuff. That's amazing. I have high hopes in these uh, little logs right here. Let's see if this lichen in my pocket is drying up. I mean, it's definitely a little drier than it was, actually. Let's give this a try. Maybe we can use a little bit of this stuff, some of the finer strands. If I just shred it real fine. It's sort of a secondary little nest to make our fire in. And if we just carried that around in our pocket all day long, that would probably dry up really nice, but it's about to get dark. We got to get the fire started now, so we do not have the luxury of time. You know what we could do actually, uh, just a little trick uh, with your knife, without cutting yourself, you can try to get a little bit of lint off of your pants. There's a little bit on the blade right there. I pull that off right there. That blue stuff, that's some dry, and that is actually dry lint. That'll take a flame, that'll catch fire. Oh yeah, look at that nice little lint ball. Curl that baby up in there. Now this guy right here is a uh, magnesium ferro rod uh, combo. Magnesium is a metal that actually burns extremely hot and extremely bright. So we're gonna shave off just some pure magnesium, some nice little curls, and we're gonna be pretty generous with the magnesium that we take off here. Check that out in there. All of those little metallic looking strands, that's the magnesium. But I hope that that sets our lichen and lint on fire. Oh, 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 look at that. We just got a little tiny flame on the lichen. So I'm feeling pretty good about that, actually. That was not bad. Oh, man, we just had a full magnesium fire, but it did not catch anything. All it gives us. Oh, 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 oh. Fire, fire, fire. Oh yeah, feel that flame, man. Oh, here we go, here we go. We lost the flame. We lost the flame. It just wasn't burning fast enough and the new stuff I was throwing on just wouldn't catch, catch fire. We've got another way to make a fire with us though. Inside this pellet tin right here, we've got uh, cotton balls. This guy here is soaked with some petroleum jelly. As you can see, we still got to practice. That's why I'm out here is just honing these skills right now because I don't want to be stuck way out in the snow in the mountains without actually being able to get a fire going. We're just going to strike it. And this guy here should catch fire very, very easily. Check this out. There we go. This guy's already burning. Get in there.
and we're having to really actively nurture this fire here. When you've got the wet conditions, you can't just kind of set it and think because you got some flames that you can start celebrating. The real work has just begun now. Oh yes, come on. All right. So we gotta let some embers grow here before we can start cooking. So let me just explain what happened uh, when we saw this dolphin. So basically we had just finished uh, our first dive of the day, went down for the second one and swam through this beautiful underwater, uh, like a coral cave, an expansive underwater coral cave. It was probably one of the most beautiful, mind-blowing things I've ever done. At one point inside the cave, I had to think to myself, like, is this actually real? Is this really happening? probably say if you're new to scuba diving definitely don't do that at home uh, the dive instructors were very confident with how we were doing so they made the call uh, that we could go through the caves so underwater we have these rattles because you can't talk to each other underwater or communicate in any way besides hand signals and further down the reef all of a sudden someone rattled again and I just remember looking up and all of a sudden I mean probably 50 feet in front of us there was a dolphin suspended vertically underwater and he was down with his head in the corals. The old guy, he just swam up back to the surface super gracefully and just disappeared. And this dolphin was, I mean, probably three, four times as big as we were. We're talking a five to 800 pound animal. It was a giant bull dolphin. And he was using his nose to flip over this giant coral. And when he flipped it over, he was looking for fish or crabs or something underneath. So he was actually hunting. Basically, all of our hearts just stopped when we were watching that whole thing. It was, it was like unreal. Our minds were just exploding again and again watching this happen in real time. When we got back to the surface, our dive instructors, both of them, actually told us that neither one of them had ever seen that kind of dolphin behavior ever before. It might be the first time that that's ever been video recorded, uh, but let me know if you guys do have footage or know of footage that exists out there of similar behavior in dolphins, uh, let me know if you have a write-up somewhere about it happening. Leave a link in uh, the comments so that I can check that out. It was absolutely beautiful. It was a crazy experience. We did end up going on a night dive that day as well. Let me just uh, get some food going here. I brought some food along. I brought some uh, venison that we're gonna cook up over the fire, and I brought some potatoes. So let's go ahead and make a rustic campfire meal together and then I'll tell you guys and show you footage uh, of the night dive that we went on that night because we saw some absolutely amazing things on that one as well. All right, so I've got a few goodies with me. Just got some olive oil, some Danish sea salt, 
some fresh rosemary. And I've got a bunch of potatoes right here. What we're probably just gonna do is take a, okay, well, we'll just take a handful here. Brought a little bit of aluminum foil out. We're gonna take a little bit of that olive oil, drizzle that on top of them. Ooh, some super coarse Danish sea salt. Break up some rosemary. I can just go right on these guys. Got some pepper. Uh, right down, right down in the coals. <laughs> and they'll just kind of sit there in that foil and they'll just steam up and get all delicious. Oh yeah, I can already hear them sizzling down in there. It's gonna be amazing. This next bit here, we're just gonna need a stick. All right, and right here I have a delicious piece of venison, which is a deer, in case you did not know that. Check it out, beautiful, a beautiful little strip. So we're gonna take our piece of venison and just slide it onto that stick right there. We're gonna season it with exactly the same thing. It's a little bit of salt, Rosemary. Just sprinkle on just a little bit of olive oil. That'll let everything come together really deliciously. And then we'll just kind of rub all of that together. Okay, the fire at this point is full of nice little embers. You don't want to cook over, like directly in a flame unless you're in a total rush. Uh, instead, you want some nice hot embers that'll provide radiant heat uh, to cook your food. So let me just go ahead and roll in the footage of that night dive that we went on. We saw some incredible stuff. Uh, so we jumped in and uh, all of us had flashlights. We stuck together as a team so that we didn't get lost from each other. And it was incredible how much wildlife was down there. And not just how much there was, but how it completely changed from day to night. beautiful there were certain types of corals that in the daytime are balled together but at night those corals release and open up like a huge fan uh, there were these weird little spider creatures that I saw down there uh, it, it, it was really an amazing experience uh, to see what the ocean looks like underwater at night it's something I never thought really I would have would ever do 
So I really hope that you guys enjoyed uh, seeing that scuba footage. It's something that I've never done before, never showed you guys before. So let me know if you guys want to see uh, more scuba, especially up here in my area, up here like in the Puget Sound, in the colder climates. I'm going to have to get a dry suit uh, or just get really, really tough <laughs> to go diving out with wetsuits in the Puget Sound. Uh, let me know if some of you guys are scuba divers. Let me know your guys' amazing scuba diving experience. Tell me some of the cool stories. For those of you that are still brand new and just kind of checked it out for the dolphin footage, I hope that you're still sticking around and enjoying this beautiful little venison steak that we're cooking up here. The potatoes are probably almost done with a nice warm fire. There's something special about that. I just love doing this kind of stuff. Those are looking absolutely fire. Here, we're gonna try one of these just while the venison finishes up. Oh, that is hot. <laughs> <coughs> so how did life die in the woods? Did he get eaten by a bear? No, he choked on a potato. Oh, wow. It's got just a little tiny bit of pink in there. Looks absolutely delicious. Oh. Oh, that's a jackpot, man. Man, now that venison is tender. Super, super tender. Mm. It just like comes apart in your mouth, man. It's been slow roasted and smoked over the fire. It's developed a beautiful smoky char flavor. Ooh. So I'm actually taking off for the next couple days to go on a more remote, uh, kind of a survival bushcraft uh, mission. I got this old axe that I found too. Kind of cool. It's like an old, old American axe. So we'll probably clean this baby up a little bit, get her sharpened real knife. That can be our, our bushcraft, bushcraft axe. Mm. All right, I gotta get back out of the woods. We put out the fire, put all the rocks back how they belong. Uh, that's all I got for you guys on this one. Remember, like, comment, subscribe. I love all you guys. We'll see you all very soon for the next one. And until then, you all know it, fish on, baby.